Does that answer your question? Yes. Well, I just, and the, but there's really no guarantee since it, it, I assume it's an open source. Exactly. Those aren't <coughs> activated as initially new modules. So that's what well, they turn. There's um, a version of Drupal called Appia Drupal, which is commercially supported by them. And it comes with some uh, rough estimate 25 to 30 modules, uh, which are all modules that we're using on our site. Uh, that they do support and that they guarantee part of the money that you pay them every year goes to uh, the development of those. And uh, they release security updates much faster than the Drupal core. And so that just kind of pains me ask you. How much does that cost? Um, it depends. I believe they offer an $8,000 a year, $2,000 a year, and $600 a year level of support. So it's pretty broad. You know, if you're running for a big corporation, then Worth it, <clears throat> especially if you've got a website. I can't. I mean, within the first hour of us signing with them, I was already so happy that we had done it. They had already helped me solve like three or four issues that I was just like, it, it already became worthwhile for us. So they're a very, very valuable resource. Yes, sir. Yeah, I have a question, uh, Jared. That maybe we can get some help from Tim too, which is not knowing much about Drupal, uh, uh -huh. but knowing something about WordPress. In my mind, I sort of think of them as like you would you could use WordPress up into a certain point and then you jump over to Drupal. And I was just asking uh, maybe Tim and you if you could talk to that issue. Like if if there's a website that has a certain amount of pages or a certain amount of users, you could use WordPress up until a certain point and then it would make sense to go to Drupal. I think and Tim can I'm more curious about your you know more about both. I know just about WordPress. So. Um, I would say that uh, I would closely consider the goals of the website before making a decision on one. I wouldn't consider size of the website or traffic because I'm actually pretty sure WordPress can handle heavy loads uh, fairly well. I would consider what the goals of the website are. So if you want to have a user-driven content site or a site like uh, that's got lots of news updates, event updates, it's, it's really heavy on the content-driven um, not so much like a blog is really content driven, but that it's it's got a very robust uh, content pool, I guess. You know, I mean, the Bookman's website has got events, concerts, news, blog, user comments, user profiles. It's got all this user generated content going into it. Um, then I would choose Drupal if you have all that. If you are running a blog with some static pages on it, you know, it's it's mainly a static site with, with a blog on there that you're going to be updating. You know, you've got this one stream of information going into it, or maybe one or two, then I would use WordPress. Um, and that's, in my mind, where I draw the line. If you're, if you're setting up pretty much a blog, go with WordPress. If you're setting up a content-driven social site, go with Drupal. That's, that's how I separate it. And Tim can, I may miss, may have misspoke about WordPress. You know. Now, can, I can, like, as far as going with events, like, Drupal is much more flexible with event presentation and stuff. We really struggle with that. WordPress, which is plugins and sort of work. Um, and there's many other features that Drupal can't expand upon. I'm, I'm, I'm curious though, like, what is, like, what is the, the point where you decide, okay, like, okay, this can't be a, this can't be a simple site, this can't be an expression engine or WordPress, this has to be Drupal? Well, I wouldn't say it can't be an expression engine, because this expression engine is actually a competitor to Drupal in my mind. Expression Engine, Joomla, and Drupal all sit in the same boat, and WordPress kind of does its own little thing. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's like everything else. There's no line in the sand, you know, of where is it. You know, on, on this side I'm WordPress, on that side I'm Drupal. There's a, a very big gray area, and depending on with your level of comfort, like um, WordPress is easier to develop for, in my experience. So, and Drupal has got a very steep learning curve. It's like you know, iPhoto versus Photoshop as far as development goes. It's, there's a big curve there, a big difference. Um, so if, you, if you're like a one-man shop and you don't have a lot of time and you know WordPress really well, then yeah, launch your site WordPress because I know that it's flexible and you can do a lot of stuff with it. If you've got the time or the money to hire somebody who already knows about Drupal, then go with it. <clears throat> but yeah, it's, it's a big animal uh, to develop for Drupal. You can use, you can download and use Drupal with the included themes and all the contributed modules, and have a very powerful, robust site. But it's going to look, you know, it's going to be included themes and contributed modules. If you want to do any sort of branching out customization, it gets pretty complicated pretty quick. So I guess yeah. The other thing is that you got to think about who's going to maintain it. And I'll tell you this: uh, the back end for Drupal 
isn't as nice as WordPress. You know? So if someone's not as comfortable with computing, they look at that WordPress backend, yeah, I can fill these in and hit save and use the WYSIWYG and you know, add photos much more easily, I think, than Drupal. So it's almost like it needs your ace in the hole kind of developer, or at least a small team or some support to go down the Drupal path. You, you mean for the, the user who like I'm talking about the back end for the yeah. user? I mean the, the common the, the, the admin user who's yeah, the admin user. Who is that person and what's their level of but that can be made to be pretty nice in Drupal, right? Yeah, it's yeah. yeah. pretty nice, but yeah. 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 it is pretty nice. Yeah. yeah. Right out of the box, WordPress is much more ready to go for non-tech stuff. But Drupal can be made to be that friendly, right? Well yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you I think I think you need to consider too, it's it's not that Drupal's unfriendly towards its user, because I think that the back end is actually pretty slick for everything that it does. Yeah. But I mean, if you launch iPhoto, and you tell a person to make some quick edits to a photo, if they've never really used a photo editor before, they can figure it out. If you launch Photoshop and tell a person, I want you to make those same edits in Photoshop, if they're going to say, they're going to look at the interface, buttons everywhere, you know, weird diagrams up in the corner, color palettes, and they're going to say, oh, what do I do? Yeah. And it's that type of thing. Um, this, in my opinion, Drupal is a, is a really powerful animal, so there's a lot of knobs and switches in the back end. So, you kind of have to keep that in mind when you get into it. Is that is that something? But I think Tim was kind of I don't know if he was kind of alluding to that or not. But I remember we did a presentation quite a number of months ago. That did for like you were talking about admin, mm -hmm. um, you know, backend users, and then you can kind of dumb it down for say say different. Um, I don't remember what they call them. But Roles. I'm sorry. Different roles. Yeah, yeah. Like the roles of, of you know, so like, yeah, say definitely. if you just have a copywriter that's going in there and drop definitely. in, like, the event. you know, an article or yeah. something, you can kind of dumb it down to where it's not as, as overwhelming when you get into the back end of that. Yeah, that's definitely true. The uh, <laughs> event coordinators, um, community coordinators, and event liaison, sorry, put those together, for bookmints, don't see nearly as much in the back end as I do. So, yeah, you can dumb it down quite a bit. Um, but there's still a learning curve, and most of them figured out pretty much on their own, but we still had a, a Drupal training session for them. And we still have tutorials and stuff online, just because even as far as just, you know, copywriters go, there's, Drupal tends to be more technical too, like it, it uses more development terms, it calls everything nodes, and if you get someone who's, who is unfamiliar with Drupal in the back end, and they're, they're reading about nodes, and publishing options, and um, publishing type, and stuff, like they, you know, Words like that, they kind of tend to freak some people out. So, um, but yeah, you can't dumb it down. Just a second, I think Monty had a question before. Yeah, I'll go after. Okay, good. Um, using movements as an example, what what are we dealing with there as far as like uh, users, you know, within the company and content that you're creating? You know, you mentioned some things that you had like comments and events and stuff. Just get an idea of, of how how many people it's it's handling. Oh dear, we've got five. There, there's six events. stores, six. and there's events liaisons in each one. So they host the events inside the store. And a community coordinator for each region? Right, for, there's one for the Phoenix Valley, one for Flagstaff, and one for Tucson. And then there's the there's Heather, who's the uh, uh, web monkey. Web monkey. Um, <laughs> she, uh, she's the ad bookman's personality on Twitter, and she uploads content. She's sort of the mod for the whole site. But in for example, just to bring it right up to today, um, the, the uh, Drupal interface is fine. It's actually far superior to Typo 3 for inputting content, but we're considering using Posterous or um, Tumblr, Tumblr. As, as a front end for those users because we really want to make it just as easy as we can. And we right. found we can't uh, realistically underestimate their skills. We tried. We tried. So, I guess to answer your question, we've got some 15 content contributors, I would say roughly between everybody in the RC and everybody out at the different stores and community coordinators doing stuff. Um, there are five super user admins, the three of us that are here for both mints and then two more in the IT department who run it. So it's a it's a pretty solid user base of people, just bookmints crew that are entering in information. And then we've got some 96, I think was the last number that I saw. Maybe one of you guys has a more updated number of registered users since March 1st. So it, it can handle pretty big quantities of, of people. And just as a reference, Drupal.org 
runs all their content generated stuff, obviously on Drupal, and they've got like thousands of users using it on their on, on stuff all the time. Registered, entering content, because 